Hi guys, it's Suki and Rudy again. And here comes Apollo. He's chilled out, he doesn't care. So if Eddie will shut up, I'll be able to make a video, but it doesn't look like it right now. Okay, now you're silent. Okay, I want to talk about Grindavik today again and the importance of Grindavik and the importance of the harbor in Grindavik because of the fishing industry that is located there or has been located there, will continue to be located there. It's a little bit all out in the open as for now. We know now residents can register on the website island.is for a bio of their homes but the current regulation is only for residents only for residential property not for the businesses so it is open for the businesses they can conduct their businesses in town again we will have to see how this works out over time for the workers if you know will they continue to live in Grindavik so at least for the people that want out there is an out right now so that's a good thing but the harbor and the fish that they bring in i want to tell you a little bit about how things were looking and how much product was brought in and which product before the november 10th event did happen and kind of destroyed business ventures and put them on hold and uh yeah and what's the future can this be replaced by other ports in the area we'll talk about this we also want to talk about uh, the volcanic situation on the Rakhianis Peninsula. What is happening? We see some earthquakes along the magma tunnel, but nothing's really happening then. But there have been some updates from a few scientists and geologists. Also, the Icelandic Met Office hazard map has expired today. We will look at what they're doing now, what they're releasing. So stay tuned. It's going to be an interesting one guys and there might be some outtakes for you at the end of the video so 22 earthquakes have occurred along the magma tunnel since midnight so that is more than the last two days the director of deformation what? measurements at the icelandic met office benedict gunnar of feixon he has therefore said that he'd be very surprised if we didn't see anything happen on the Reykjanes Peninsula this week. And it's Tuesday today, so this week is only a few more days and the magma chamber is filling and it is already filled way more than before the last event. So we should be above 12 million cubic meters already. He also says that the signs are clear that the land rise is continuing at that there are no signs that this is slowing down. I have also read a report of a scientist at the Oxford University and he assumes that um, this is going to be going on for quite a while for decades. So this isn't going to stop anytime soon. So he assumes there will be repeated events. So any hope that this magma chamber might empty out and then that this could have been it are not there. It's whenever there's an event and magma's flowing out of that magma chamber, it starts refilling from a deeper magma reservoir right away. It shows no signs of slowing down. And of course, that is something that the residents of Grindavik and the whole nation has assumed for quite a while and i think the realization comes day by day and especially for the residents and also the businesses of the little fishing town of grindavik and because this will influence their future heavily Benedict Gunnar of Feixson also states that if we see a next eruption, it can happen even with less than 30 minutes warning. They have already said before the last event, warning could be 30 minutes because the magma might not have to grind new tunnels because there are existing paths and tunnels there for the magma where it could flow to. So probably less seismic activity and even less warning 
wasting time now. And that's not good for people that are in the town of Grindavik and also in the surrounding areas like at my friend, the Blue Lagoon, for example, because they always needed a roughly 40 minutes to evacuate. So less than 30 minutes warning time that's not good the warning time basically starts when they feel the earthquake swarm beginning and then it's the time from the beginning of the earthquake swarm until potential magmas coming to the surface and lava starts flowing and an eruption is occurring if it's just an intrusion like we had on march 2nd that nothing erupts to the surface um, then it's not that critical and guys, since we're all sitting together here, the wind has kind of left us that has been there the last few days. It's warmer and sunnier. Um, we would like to ask you, could you leave this video a like? Leave it a comment, please. And of course, if you're new here, I would love to earn your subscription. But watch it till the end if you can. That pushes the algorithm a little bit put some fire under the algorithm's butt to push out my video. So thanks for that, guys. And let's continue with the video. Apollo, can you pay attention? Hey, Apollo, pay attention what we're talking about here. Don't ignore our viewers. Say hi. Hey, say hi. He's just whatever. I want to chill in the sun. <laughs> Another expert from the Icelandic Meteorological Office also states that the earthquake activity along the magma tunnel the last two days has been stronger than the days before. Remember 22 earthquakes along the tunnel since midnight, but it is also stated that, you know, we could only maybe see more earthquakes now because the weather has calmed down a little bit, so there's less wind. So the seismic instruments can measure these smaller seismic events better. So if the weather is bad, if there's a lot of rainstorm, wind, snow, whatever, they can't really measure the smaller earthquakes that well. So sometimes it looks calmer than it actually is. And another thing that is worth mentioning, yes, 22 earthquakes since midnight, most of them have happened on the south side of the magma tunnel towards Grindavik. That's where Grindavik is. And now Rudy and Eddie have left again because they have seen another bunny. So they have to go and try to chase that. Um, yeah, so towards Grindavik, does that mean anything? Well, it is hard to say. Does it mean that we could see a potential eruption near Grindavik again or inside Grindavik again? You know, just a few days ago, there was a 2.8 magnitude earthquake, which is quite large for that area. Um, also towards Grindavik, basically southeast of Mount Thorbjörn along the magma tunnel. I've made a video about that. If you want to know more about that, check it out. Um, so are these indications? Well, it could be, but it also couldn't be. If you ask my gut feeling, it, I would say yes, there is something going on. But you know, we don't know for sure. Nobody really knows for sure. It's still a waiting game and it's still a guessing game. In the opinion of the Met Office, they're saying the seismic activity that we're seeing right now is not the seismic activity that we would see before an eruption. So their guess is that this activity is more due to magma cooling in the magma tunnels. So that can also cause some seismic activity. So they're expecting if there is magma on the move and preparing for an eruption, we would see more significant seismic activity in the Selingerfell area. So that is basically the area where we have seen the December eruption and also the last eruption. So it is still kind of the calm before the storm. We're still waiting for the bigger earthquake swarm that might indicate that magma's on the move again. But one thing they are quite sure about, and that is that the magma chamber definitely is fuller than it was before the February 8th eruption. So more magma is in there, probably more pressure than with the last eruption.
So the system is definitely reaching its limit of tolerance again, so the maximum elasticity for that magma chamber. And you know, the reason why it didn't come to the surface in the March 2nd event is that it might have flown into some fissure that was not open to the surface, that had still a hard enough top. And so that might be the reason, or there wasn't just enough, not enough pressure to push it up to the surface. But now, one thing we know for sure, there is enough magma in the chamber that could cause an eruption because it has caused an eruption in February when there was about the same amount or even less in the magma chamber. So as I just said, we have more in the magma chamber right now. So the pressure should be enough to push something to the surface. But it is also normal that a system like this doesn't create a volcanic eruption every time. So it is not unusual that in the the chain of events we see some intrusions as well and not only eruptions all the time but as i said it is a waiting game so let's talk about the port of grindavik a little bit more so grindavik has been an important fishing town always since the country's fishing history and it is assumed that the sea fishing has been practiced in Grindavik since the settlement has been founded there. So in the last two decades roughly from 2003 till 2023 more than a million tons of sea fish did land in the town and were processed and most of it it is caught but it also is a considerable amount of other fish and more than 130,000 tons of capelin have been landed in Grindavik. So in the past years Grindavik has been the harbor where the most of the cod has been landed and it, it is one of the nation's most valuable fishing ports and grounds. So in 2021 Grindavik has processed 27,000 tons of cod and in 2022 over 21,000 tons. So this is significant and in the past they used to salt the fish to preserve it. That's why there is the salt fish museum in Grindavik and recently most of the fish is just frozen and preserved that way we know about the business owners that have complained that they weren't allowed into town to access their facilities to get their product out they had a lot of frozen fish there then there were power outages and of course they were worried because these products are worth a lot of money so this has been regulated by now so businesses are allowed back into town the town has electricity and everything so i think the businesses should be happier by now. So guys, that was my today's update. It's still a waiting game for that volcano. We will have to see. It should happen anytime and quite soon for sure. So if you liked this video and if you want to see more of the four of us and maybe some horses too, if <laughs> then please uh, click the notification bell and subscribe. But also check my channel page daily. I'm releasing videos daily. So if you don't get a notification, check my channel. The video will be there for sure lots of people have told me the notifications sometimes really don't work correctly so that you don't lose out and that we can see each other every day and have a coffee or a tea or whatever together if it's in the evening a beer although i don't drink beer too much although i'm bavarian but thanks guys thanks for your ongoing support on my buy me a coffee uh, website and of course the supers you're giving me here you're absolutely awesome and my heart goes out to you stay safe i'll hope i'll see you very very soon guys we are out of here apollo's already sleeping bye hi guys it's silky and rudy again and we want to talk hi guys it's silky and rudy again and the other gang and now eddie starts barking again because he's jealous that rudy is in the picture and You have to be quiet. Eddie, you have to be quiet. Can you be quiet? Shh.
and I'll bark at it for the next 30 minutes. So Apollo, it's, this is not going to work. Eddie, you have to be quiet. Oh, nine, nope, he's quiet. So, inside Grindavik again and now I have a fly underneath my glasses and I think I have to take that off before I can continue. This is disgusting. Oh, that was just a little tiny fly. protection.